In the previous lecture, we have discussed one example based on block diagram reduction. Now in this presentation, we are going to discuss one more example based on block diagram reduction. So let's get started. Using the block diagram reduction technique, determine the closed loop transfer function CS over RS. We are given a block diagram representation and we need to find out its overall transfer function by using the block diagram reduction technique. If we observe the block diagram representation, it is having two different adders. There are two blocks in the forward path having gain G1 and G2. There is a feedback having gain H2 which is connected to this adder. And there is one more feedback having gain H1 which is connected to this adder. The reference input is RS and the final output is CS. And we need to find out the overall transfer function of this block diagram representation by using the block diagram reduction technique. So I want you all to observe this block diagram representation carefully and think from where we can start our problem. If we observe this portion of block diagram representation carefully, then we can see this is a closed loop system having negative feedback. And we can solve this by using the overall transfer function and we can replace this portion with a single block. But there is one problem. This adder here is a three input adder. Whenever we find out the closed loop transfer function of a negative feedback system, this adder is a two input adder, where one of the inputs is the reference input and the other input is the feedback input. But in this case, this adder is having one extra input, which is the input from this takeoff point. And we do not have a standard formula to calculate the overall closed loop transfer function when this adder is a three input adder. So we cannot convert this closed loop system into a single block directly. Firstly, we need to handle this three input adder. And how we can do this? All right, we know the formula to calculate the overall transfer function in case of a negative feedback system whenever this adder is a two input adder, right? So what if we convert this three input adder into two input adder? Yes, it is possible. So now we will discuss that how we can split a three input adder into two two input adders by rule number 11 of block diagram reduction, which is regarding the splitting of a three input adder into two two input adders. Let us consider this three input adder in which one of the inputs is R1, the second input is R2, and the third input is R3. Then what will be the output of this adder? Yes, it will be R1 plus R2 plus R3. Now let's see how we can convert this three input adder into two two input adders. Consider this block diagram representation in which we are having two adders. Both the adders are two input adders. Now consider the first input of this adder as R1 and the second input is R2. Now what is the output of this adder? Yes, it will be R1 plus R2. Now this output of first adder is now the input of the second adder. And the second input of this adder is R3. So what will be the output of this adder? Yes, it will be R1 plus R2 plus R3, which is the same output in case of a three input adder. So in this way, we can split a three input adder into two different two input adders. And now we will apply this rule in order to split this three input adder into two different two input adders in order to solve this closed loop system. So now we have discussed the rule number 11 of block diagram reduction, which is regarding the splitting of a three input adder. Coming back to the example, this is the block diagram representation, which is given in the problem. And we have discussed that we need to replace this three input adder into two different two input adders in order to solve this closed loop system. So moving on to the solution, our step number one is the splitting the summing point. We need to split this adder or this summing point. So firstly, we will check the inputs of this adder. The first input is the output from this block G1. The second input is this negative feedback having gain H2. And the third input is the output from this takeoff point. If we split this three input adder into two different two input adders, then the block diagram representation will look like this. See, we have split this three input adder into two different two input adders. The first input of this adder is the output from this block G1. And the second input is the branch coming from this takeoff point. And the output of this adder is the input to the second adder. 
And the second input of this adder is the negative feedback having gain H2. Now observe this block diagram representation carefully. Yes, now we can see this negative feedback system clearly. The forward path gain is G2 and the feedback path gain is H2. This is a negative feedback system and we can replace this with a single block which will have the transfer function G2 over 1 plus G2 H2. So our step number 2 will be solving the negative feedback. Moving on to step number 2 which is solving the negative feedback. If we solve the negative feedback of the closed loop system, we will have the block diagram representation like this and we have replaced the closed loop system with a single block. And the gain of this block will be the closed loop transfer function which is G2 over 1 plus G2 H2. Now observe this block diagram representation carefully and think what can we do in our next step. If we observe this portion of the block diagram representation, we can see there can be a closed loop system. But this adder is a problem here. So if we want to convert this portion of the block diagram representation into a negative feedback system, we have two options. Either we shift this adder before this block G1 or we shift this adder after this block G1. So let us shift this adder to the right of this block and let's see what happens. So our step number 3 will be shifting the adder after the block G1. And from rule number 10 of block diagram reductions, we know that if we want to shift an adder after a block, then we need to multiply the gain of this block with this input. So if we shift this adder point after this block, the block diagram representation will look like this. See, we have shifted the adder point after this block and due to this, the gain of this block is multiplied with this input. If we look at the block diagram representation, it is clearly visible that these two blocks are now in series. So we can multiply the gains of these two blocks. Moreover, we are having two side by side adders. If we rearrange these two adders, this adder will come to the left hand side and this adder will come to the right hand side. And after that, we will have this closed loop system completed with the negative feedback. And we can replace this system with a single block. Let us check this out in step number 4. Moving on to step number 4 which is rearrangement of adders and multiplying the gains of blocks in series. So if we rearrange the adders and multiply the gains of blocks which are present in series, we will have the block diagram representation like this. The gain of this block will be G1 H1. This adder is now at the right hand side and this adder is at the left hand side. And now we can clearly see that this is a negative feedback system having forward path gain G2 over 1 plus G2 H2 and the feedback path gain G1 H1. We can replace this negative feedback system with a single block. If we calculate the overall transfer function of this closed loop system, we will have G2 over 1 plus G2 H2 over 1 plus G2 over 1 plus G2 H2 multiplied with G1 H1. We know that the formula to calculate the overall transfer function of a negative feedback system is Gs over 1 plus GSHs, where Gs is the forward path gain and Hs is the feedback path gain. Now if we take the LCM and solve this, we will have G2 over 1 plus G2 H2 plus G1 G2 H1. This is the overall transfer function of this closed loop system. And now we will move on to step number 5 which is solving the negative feedback. If we convert this negative feedback into a single block, then the block diagram representation will look like this and the gain of this block will be the overall transfer function which is G2 over 1 plus G2 H2 plus G1 G2 H1. Now observe the block diagram representation again and think what can be the next step. Yes, we can say that this block having gain G1 and this unity gain branch are connected in parallel. As this block is connected between this takeoff point and this adder and this unity gain branch is also connected between this takeoff point and this adder. And we all know that if the blocks are connected in parallel, we can add the gains of those two blocks. In this case, the gain of this branch is unity that is equal to 1 and the gain of this block is equal to G1. So if we convert this parallel combination into a single block, then the gain of that block will be 1 plus G1. 
So let us move on to step number six, in which we will convert this parallel combination into a single block. So moving on to step number six, which is adding the gains of blocks in parallel. And if we add the gains of blocks in parallel, the block diagram representation will look like this. See, we have replaced the blocks in parallel with a single block having gain 1 plus g1. And now we can see that these two blocks are connected in series. And we can convert this into a single block if we multiply the gains of these two blocks. So if we multiply the gains of these two blocks, the block diagram representation will look like this. And the gain of this block will be 1 plus g1 multiplied with g2 over 1 plus g2 h2 plus g1 g2 h1. In this way, we have converted the complex system given in the problem into a single block. And now we can say that the overall transfer function of the system is Cs over Rs equal to G2s plus G1s multiplied with G2s over 1 plus G2s multiplied with H2s plus G1s multiplied with G2s multiplied with H1s. And this is the answer to this problem. I'll recommend you all to go through this example one more time and then after that, I'll give you some homework problems. Try these questions on your own and if you are able to do it, let me know in the comment section. Thank you for watching this lecture. I'll end this one here. See you in the next lecture.